Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been three weeks since my last confession. I'm still working as a rent boy, Father. I know it's wrong, but what else can I do? For what it's worth, it's going pretty well. I've even got a few regulars. Now, Hogleg, that guy I was telling you about. I've served him three or four times. He still scares the shit out of me with all his talk of guns and gun clubs and all his gun friends he goes gunning with, but I no longer consider him an immediate and constant threat to my life, which I think is an important turning point in any relationship. Actually, no, I've got the hang of it. I think I make a pretty good rent, boy. Oh, and did I mention I offer a discount to members of the clergy? No? Suit yourself. Don't get me wrong, I don't get a thing out of it, but in a funny way that helps my performance. It means I can be entirely objective and never forget it is a performance. I can give them what they want without any inconvenient distractions, like actually enjoying it. I've got a place to stay now. I found a cheap B&B &B that's off the beaten path. The room's basic, but really so are my needs. The only drawback is the woman who runs it, an old Polish lady called Mrs Lipinski. Nice enough, but she can talk for England. Well, Poland. And so many questions. Why are you staying here? What are you doing with yourself? Don't you have a job? Haven't you got a girlfriend? Why can't the old bat mind her own business? I can see her becoming a problem down the line. One I might have to deal with. And then there's everything that's been going on with Elizabeth. When I realised I'd been saved to watch over her, everything changed. Suddenly my life had a purpose. Maybe I live in a grotty bed and breakfast, maybe I'll let strange men deem me up the bum for a living, but nothing would induce me to exchange this existence for what I had before, going through the motions of life with no meaning to any of it. It's so nice to have a reason to get out of bed. I'm here to protect the girl I love from all the horrors of the world. And that's the only job I ever wanted. Of course, my efforts are impeded by the fact that I'm officially dead. When I used to watch Elizabeth, I'd park outside her house. Well, I gave up my car along with my identity, but more importantly, I mustn't be seen. I'm not worried about the odd glance at the distance. She never knew me without the beard, and I've lost a few stones since she last saw me. Nothing like misery and depression for weight loss. So, yeah, I figure it would take her a few seconds to recognise me, and if she did, would she believe it? Those kids that film me, jumping off the cliff. They printed stills from the film in the local paper. I'm the last person Elizabeth will expect to see alive. Still, I can't be too blatant, so I've been spending a lot of time in the field opposite her house. I can watch through the bushes without being seen, and the cows don't bother me too much. I know it sounds like I've started stalking her again, but it isn't like that. How can I help her when I don't know what's going on in her life? Case in point, a few days ago it became clear she needed my help. She started bringing this guy home, obviously her latest boyfriend. Believe me, she has a lot of boyfriends. Elizabeth always was a slave to her sluttishness. Anyway, I don't like the look of this guy one bit, so I decided I'd better find out more about him. I figure out he's spending the night at Elizabeth's house, then getting a bus first thing in the morning, so I start getting on at an earlier stop to find out where he goes, which was a factory on the industrial estate during the week and a little semi at weekends. So now I know where he lives and works. One time I broke into his house and had a look around, which was most educational. Name's Adrian Hadley. He's a twat. Anyway, one morning... He gets off the bus, but forgets his jacket. He realises before the bus has pulled away, but I get an idea. I grab his jacket, run down the aisle, and hand it to him like I'm doing him a favour. Only really, I'm taking the opportunity to steal his phone. Later, I went into the Weatherspoons in town and swiped another mobile someone had left lying around. After that, it was easy. I spent the rest of the day sending texts between the two phones. I'll be honest with you, Father, that was some pretty filthy talk. The things those two wanted to do to one another. Even Hogleg would have been shocked. Then it was back to Elizabeth's, a short wait until she went out, 
and now it was time to return Adrian's phone. It's easy to break into houses. I've got a trick with a credit card. But this was the first time I'd been inside Elizabeth's house since that day in the garden, with a knife. And it was such a thrill to be back. I really felt like I was part of her life again, you know. I'd forgotten how much I missed her. Still, I couldn't afford to hang around, so I slipped the phone behind the biscuit tin in the kitchen so I'd have a good view through the window when she found it, and got out, and then I waited in my field until she got home. I gave it twenty minutes after she got in, didn't want it to look suspicious, and then I called. Elizabeth came into the kitchen, looking a bit puzzled by this unfamiliar ringtone. When she tracked it down, she glanced at the screen and answered. She was all, Hello? It's so long since I'd heard her voice. It's so beautiful, sort of breathy, but sweet and innocent, and you can hear her kindness and sense of humour. If you'd never met her, if all you'd ever heard was that hello, you'd know that she's beautiful and wonderful and just amazing. But as well as all that, there's something else you'd know from this hello, which is that she was suspicious, because the name that came up on the screen, because it's how I entered this other phone in his address book, a slutty Sal. I wanted to stay on the line and hear her voice again, but I knew I had to hang up as soon as a female voice answered. That's what slutty Sal would do. All I could do was watch and hope she took the bait. For a minute she just stared at the phone, like she was weighing up suspicion against her desire to trust her boyfriend. Suspicion one and I watched as she read through every text I'd sent that day, and her face fell as she read about Adrian's desire to lick Marmite off slutty Sal's nipples, and about Sal's equally fervent wish to have Adrian come on her face, and before I knew it, Elizabeth was shaking and crying, and she threw the phone across the room and collapsed to her knees in tears. Oh, I wish I could have gone in and comforted her. She needed me so much. I hated to see her like that, I know I couldn't help, but I consoled myself with the knowledge that I already had. It was a safe bet she wouldn't be seeing Adrian again, and I knew she was better off without him. That was a week ago. As far as I can tell, she hasn't seen him since. She doesn't need a boyfriend anyway, not when she's got me. And this is only the beginning.